Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Connor O'Glocklin. He's the co-founder and CEO of Glowfox, and we are going to discuss how data impacts your workout and your choices of gym. Connor, it's great to have you with us. And, you know, at NASDAQ, we talk about data and fintech all the time, but I've never had it where it's associated to what happens at the gym. And what you're seeing is a growth market for boutique gyms. Is that a trend? Is it with a younger generation? Do you think it's a bubble or trend that's going to last? Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's a movement, right? It's not, it's not even been a trend. Over the last few years, what you've seen has been this kind of shift away from a more traditional gym model where, you know, the gyms would sell an annual membership and really hope that their members don't show up to keep space at a, at a premium. But it's a shift towards this more experience-led um, uh, uh, type of fitness experience where it's driven by millennials and you know their need to to have more of a community more of a um, more of a social aspect to their fitness and you know the way that these gyms are, are enabling that is by you know enhancing their brand enhancing the identity that the, the members actually feel and uh, that affiliation with their club or their studio um, but also by pulling in data that are helping them to see their uh, see their progress and help them to achieve their own goals yeah, well, it's interesting because on my gym app, I go to Equinox. Now, granted, that is a big box gym. Yeah. Um, I love it because it's local to me. I travel globally, and they're accessible throughout the United States. But what I have noticed on the app over the past year or two, they actually have community sections mm -hmm. built in there, um, and you can go into different rooms and boards and, and join. Um, I, I never expected to see something like that on a gym app before. Now, with the newer generations, they are really on the cusp of disposable income. Um, do you think that they will continue to spend money at this rapid rate on fitness? Yeah, and like even even the touch on the, the the change in the Equinox model is what you're seeing in the space too. Is the reaction from these more traditional gyms to how boutiques have been uh, have been taking their market share. You know, the boutiques um, they they charge a premium because they're giving a, a more premium service and a more premium experience. And millennials and that generation they'll continue to spend on that um, because they are getting that experience um, that they crave. And then these more traditional gyms are trying to to encapsulate that experience in their model. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing is that members' expectations are changing. They want a more flexible usage and flexible payment system, not be kind of locked into these longer term contracts. Um, and they want that sense of community. They want that sense of inclusion. And um, so that's how the market is going. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant move by the gyms. I never put two and two together yeah. until we're sitting here having this conversation. Um, so I just look at it as convenience, but it, it now it occurs to me. Now, the, do you think that with all the data that they're collecting, what's next? Is it going to lend to better experiences, lend to more retention? Yeah, it's it, with fitness, like keeping keeping folks motivated and keeping them actually active in in your gym or studio and, and spending money and seeing the results. You need to create um, you need to create these experiences that are, are enabling them to to have challenges in front of them and see progress of those challenges. Where data plays a plays a big part. But then from the the gyms and the industry as a as a whole, what they have is they have this great underlying data on the preferences of their end users, and they're able to to serve up. Uh, better experiences, more in line with their preferences. So I know if you're going to, you know, spinning three times a week, you're going to like this new class that comes out, and and be able to to really just construct the experiences in line with with that data. I would imagine it also opens up opportunities for partnerships as well, mm -hmm. right? So if you see, um, what this, let's say someone's talking about a clothing line within a particular community that they like the most, let's like, use Puma as a random example, right? Perhaps there's partnership opportunities there because they know their clients are going towards that brand. Do you foresee something like that happening or is that happening right now? That's already happening. And that's a big part of where boutiques actually led the movement is because their branding is so strong. You know, they, they create this sense of, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a high fidelity relationship that they have with their members and, and their users. It's like, you know, I go to Soul Cycle. that's my, uh, part of my identity or, or a Barry's Bootcamp or an F45. And, you know, a big part of that is is the branding side and where they can they can have this apparel where they're they're out there marketing to the world um, and they're bringing their friends and they're creating that uh, that community and um, so there's a four trillion dollar spend in the in the health and fitness and wellness 
um, on an annual basis and there's massive overlays in, in how gyms and studios can kind of tap into that and, and deliver that enhanced experience but also really cement their brand with their members. Yeah. I should have asked this in the beginning but what qualifies as a boutique gym? Is that just one or two locations throughout Manhattan or is there size or types of classes offered? It's usually a boutique gym or studio is one that, that focuses on a, a certain discipline or maybe a small uh, subset of disciplines mm -hmm. and it's also it's it's more commonly associated with group exercise or group classes um, and you know they they'd be more around you know with the two three hundred member mark um, and the, the reason why they become so popular and so successful is the, the economics of these businesses are really highly attractive they're charging a premium they can operate in a smaller space they don't need a 24 7 kind of uh, you know system in place with lockers and a swimming pool so um, they've been popping up like you know exploding in the past a number of years and you can also have different variants segments of it like a dance studio can be beside a mixed martial arts but it can be beside a yoga studio yeah. and not necessarily cannibalize each other's market share so you know for that reason they've been they've been successful but i think you know it's more the business model and that and that's really what why the the main factor is their success has been this more uh, creating engaged members and, and delivering an experience for members of what they expect and what they, they crave. All right, now to wrap up here, Glowfox, where do you fit in this ecosystem? Yeah, we're a business management platform that, that serves this type of business model. Um, so we, uh, we provide tools that, uh, that help these gyms and studios uh, increase their retention, uh, increase their revenue, and provide that, you know, that very, you know, like cement that relationship uh, between the gym and their end member. Um, so we're currently operating for thousands of studios in over 60 countries at the moment oh, and wow. serving uh, millions of end members. So it's, it's quite an exciting journey so far. All right. Now, the markets in the U.S., what are the most popular? I would imagine L.A., New York. Yeah, so we're, we're, our, our, our main uh, U.S. HQ is out of L.A., but L.A. And, and New York, those two markets have been really the, at the forefront of the boutique fitness movement, um, and they are definitely the ones that are kind of leading the charge and more visionary in that, that regard, but what you're starting to see is that it's, it's becoming pervasive. It's, it's, as we said at the start, it's not necessarily a trend, it's more of a, a change and a yeah. movement. All right, Connor, thanks so much for joining us at Market Site. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.